Hello everyone, I'm Matt Kelly and welcome to another episode of What's Next in Compliance. In this episode we're going to take another look at anticipated regulatory enforcement under the Trump administration. We have a few new tea leaves this spring that are worth reading. Uh, first, we've seen more names filling into the mid-level positions at the Justice Department. These are the Deputy and Assistant Attorneys General who play critical roles in prosecuting individual companies and in setting prosecution policy for a corporate misconduct generally. And regardless of your political leanings, the names we've seen so far are all very reasonable expected choices for this administration. So example number one, we have Rod Rosenstein. He's been tapped to be a Deputy Attorney General. Rosenstein has been U.S. Attorney for Maryland since 2005, and that is, he was appointed during the Bush administration and asked to remain throughout the Obama administration. And now he's being asked to serve in this new role in another Republican administration. Uh, we also have Trevor McFadden. He is Deputy Assistant Attorney General for the Criminal Division. So McFadden oversees enforcement of the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act and all the other corp complex corporate misconduct cases we have. Uh, McFadden worked at the Justice Department at the tail end of the Bush administration, and then he went to the private sector at the law firm Baker McKenzie, and he did FCPA defense work there. So Rosenstein and McFadden together, these are both very good, knowledgeable prosecutors, and Rosenstein in particular, who will have a significant policy-setting role uh, someone like him does not keep a U.S. attorney a job across multiple presidential administrations without having a very solid level head on your shoulders. So we also have a pile of public statements from Attorney General Jeff Sessions who says, first, that his department will continue to prosecute the FCPA and other anti-corruption statutes, and that prosecutors will focus more on individuals rather than companies. We've heard that before and we'll keep hearing it again that the prosecution of corporate misconduct laws will continue, but more in pursuit of individual wrongdoers rather than companies, as long as the company can show evidence of robust policies and procedures to police against misconduct. Okay, what then do compliance officers need to look for in that world? Well, we have a few things here. First, we still need a better understanding of how the Justice Department will determine a company's possible criminal liability because the department has said several times now that where no criminal liability exists, the investigation stops. As a practical matter then, compliance and legal departments will want to know what they could provide to the Justice Department to help the department reach that decision point. What evidence from an internal investigation? What documentation of compliance program efforts? We don't have answers to those questions yet, but that's really the crucial question here. What will the process be like to reach that decision point about criminal liability. Second, how vigorously will prosecutors review the effectiveness of a company's corporate compliance program? The more vigorous that scrutiny is, the more work compliance officers have to do, and also, the more attention your board and CEO give to compliance. Now, we do have that superb guidance from the Justice Department earlier this year, a list of more than 100 possible questions prosecutors could ask as they're evaluating the effectiveness of your compliance program. The, that guidance is great stuff, and it can really inform compliance officers about how you should build and operate a compliance program. But we don't know right now how this new team of prosecutors at the Justice Department really will apply that guidance in practice. It's going to be something worth watching closely. Finally, we need to understand how the Justice Department will work with the Securities and Exchange Commission on FCPA cases. It could well be that the Justice Department will decide questions of criminal liability more quickly and close that end of an FCPA investigation, but you still have an SEC enforcement action running on the civil side, and we don't know how the enforcement team at the SEC will review internal controls and procedures where they might still impose sanctions on a company for FCPA compliance weaknesses, even if the Justice Department takes no action. The bottom line then is that the FCPA enforcement is not going to go away. If your company takes a lackadaisical attitude to FCPA compliance, you're still risking big problems. I've said before that compliance officers will still have plenty to do for compliance with the FCPA and other laws too. That is still true today and it's going to be true tomorrow. That's all for this episode of What's Next in Compliance. I'm your host, Matt Kelly. Thanks for joining and I hope to see you next time.